Hey, I'm Gabe with Vitev. So we've been around for a long time, and in that amount of time, we've seen pretty much every argument that could be made on the pro-alkaline water side, as well as the anti-alkaline water side. And one thing that we noticed is that neither side is completely accurate. You know, there's some truth in each side. There's also some things left out from each side, which, I mean, it's just human nature, right? We wanna present what makes us look best uh, and, and keep the other stuff behind us. Any parent can tell you that. Um, but we thought, um, since there's really not an accurate list of quote, misconceptions about alkaline water out there, uh, we'd make our own. We try to be a little bit more even-handed in our approach and show the good and the bad for each side. So let's just call these Vitev's list of misconceptions. So number one, and this is more at the pro-alkaline water side of the fence, um, alkaline water will not cure and or prevent all disease. It's not the way it works. You can't take a really complex and, and diverse you know, biological system like the human body and solve all the problems with a very simplified and kind of overgeneralized um, solution. It's just not, it's not, not only is it untrue, but it, it's actually harmful. Um, it may not seem that way in the, in the interest of a quick sale or maybe when you're trying to build your downline in some multi-level organization, um, but ultimately it's not good. Uh, it sets people up for problems down the road and ultimately has done harm to the entire industry because what it does is allow for those on the side who say there's nothing to this idea of alkalinity and health or alkaline water is just a bunch of snake oil. It allows them to take that flawed idea that you're presenting, exploit it, and, and say that that's the way the whole industry is, that there really is nothing to it. They can discount the antioxidant benefits, they can discount the hydration benefits, or just the experiences and the results of tens to hundreds of thousands of people um, over the last, what, two decades now. So. If you're one who finds yourself doing that within your marketing, please stop. Uh, it's not true. Don't do it. And if you're one who tends to use that as an argument against the benefits of alkaline water, well, that's not exactly true either. All right, number two, pH is not alkalinity. I mean, this one drives us nuts. We see it so often. Uh, it's caused a lot of confusion as well. And, and we've seen basically both sides of the fence talking past each other on this one. And, and I'll, I'll explain why. So alkalinity essentially is a measurement of a liquid's capacity to neutralize an acid. That's it. The way that liquid does it, in our case water, is by bringing along mineral compounds, alkaline compounds, alkaline minerals, to then fight the effects of acid. Um, if it doesn't have those, it's not gonna do much good. pH, on the other hand, is simply a measurement of hydrogen. Now, yes, there's an acid and a base scale within the pH, but that's not necessarily the same thing as the acid and the base within the alkaline understanding either. Okay, They're, those are two, we're talking about two totally different things here. You can have a very high pH and a very low alkalinity. You can have a very, in fact, that's oftentimes what you'll find with an electric ionizer. You can also have a very low pH and a very high alkalinity. The two things do not have to work in tandem. It's better if they do, but they don't necessarily have to. So why is this important? Well, it's because the body is a buffered system. It needs those real compounds, those real alkaline minerals to fight the effects of acid. So calcium, magnesium, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, you know, the minerals in a lemon, those types of things are what the body needs to do its work. If it doesn't have them, it can't do it. So that's the key takeaway here, is that we wanna make sure that we're really providing alkaline benefits. If we say we're providing alkaline benefits, that means it needs to be some minerals in the water. Um, we prefer a mineral-based system, not because we're giving you like a bunch of supplements, you know, or a high level of minerals in the water, but because the difference between the pH and the alkalinity is not as dramatic as you'll find with some of the supercharged systems out there. They give you really high performance right away, but they don't last that long. You might get the antioxidant benefits and some of the hydration benefits and even the hydrogen benefits for a while, but eventually you need more than that, which is why we think it's important that we're specific when we're talking about alkalinity, and pH. All right, number three, and just to show you that the flawed science doesn't only lie on one side of the fence. There's an idea out there, we've really seen it increase in the last 12 months at least, maybe a year and a half, that the body self-regulates pH and it doesn't need any help from us. Um, now this is being said in newspaper articles, magazine articles, television interviews, and just media coverage in general. And it's being said by doctors, nutritionists, dietitians, I mean, formerly educated people that should know how the processes in the body work and what good foods and bad foods are. I mean, it's essentially being, we're, we're being told that 
there's no difference in what you choose to eat or drink. If you, if you decide you want to take a, an alkaline water or increase your alkaline foods, you're just wasting your time and your effort. And the body does not need it. So a bowl of ice cream or a salad, it doesn't matter. Pick either one. You're going to have the same result because the body takes care of itself. I mean, it really is mind-blowing that that's the guidance that's coming out right now in mass when this question comes up. It's almost like they've been given talking points because the interest in the idea of changing your alkalinity and improving your health is getting more traction and gaining more interest. So um, the other thing to, to take note on this is we have yet to see a follow-up question given such as, well, how does the body do that? Because we all know that we're not born with this just, you know, battery of minerals connected to us or this store of minerals that we gradually use and deplete over our life and when it runs out we die. It's not the way it works, right? We need to eat nutrient-rich, mineral-rich, vitamin-rich foods, antioxidant-rich foods to help the body. That's where we get those things to fight the effects of acid, to fight the effects of stress, to fight the effects of oxidation, all that stuff. It comes from what we eat and drink. It absolutely makes a difference what we choose to put into our mouth. And it's just really concerning and, uh, and just, like I said, mind-blowing to see that information coming out from educated nutritionists. All right, number four, and this is the last one. Uh, we tried to do two from each side of the argument here. Um, but this one is, it's more about the idea or, or what's presented as um, alternative methods to get alkaline water. That you can use things like baking soda or lemons or even buying it in the store and achieve the same benefits that you would get using an ionizer in your home. And the idea that you can do that is just flawed. Um, do all of those things have some benefits and some uses? Absolutely. But they're also all missing some substantial properties of the water that give us some significant benefits when it comes to how we feel, our energy level, and just our overall health. The biggest thing between all of those, or the biggest thing that they're all missing, is antioxidant levels. Um, those are most closely related to kind of a freshness. So, so think of alkaline water very much like you would a food, a, a, a produce, something that's living, right? Uh, fruits and vegetables. You can buy them in the store, whether they've been in cold storage for like a year, or you can get them at the farmer's market, or you can pick them out of the garden in your backyard. We both know, or we all know that those last two options, both of those things are better than buying them at the store. The food's more nutrient rich, it hasn't decayed, it hasn't started to break down, everything's better for you. The time between vine and your mouth is much shorter. Water's the same way. The quicker you can get it from the source of its ionization and its alkalizing and everything else, the ionizer, the shorter time between that, putting it in your glass and drinking it, the better. If you want to use some baking soda, that's fine. You can't use it very often because it gives you some pretty bad side effects, um, carbon dioxide. Um, lemon water, same thing. Have a glass of lemon water in the morning. It's totally fine. It gives you some good benefits of, of alkaline minerals. And bottled water, if you're out and just need some water on the go, choose those options over the non-alkaline varieties. All of that makes sense. But don't think you can replace and get all the same benefits that alkaline water is known for by using those options as well. All right? So that's it. Um, that's all the four that we wanted to go over. We think pretty much everything can kind of be categorized within those four main areas. Um, we hope this has helped. We hope to shed a little bit more light on both the pros and the cons to each side of the discussion here. If you have other thoughts or just want to make some comments, you can do that down below. Um, our contact info is down there as well if you want to give us a buzz or you have other questions that you'd like us to help you with. And above all, we hope this has helped you. We look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great day.